All right, all you Gen Xers like me, we have got a show that is sort of made for us. Yellow Jackets just finished up its first season on Showtime, so it was worth the time to binge. Wildly talented high school girls as soccer players descend into savage mystery after their plane crashes in the remote northern wilderness. 25 years later, they discover that what began in the wild is far from over. All right, so this takes place towards the latter end of the Gen X boundaries, but it still is refreshing to see actors who are kind of around my age playing characters who are around my age, telling a story that happened around my teenage years, even if they're just a little bit younger. This is told in two timelines, the past in 1996 and then the present in 2021. And like I mentioned in the synopsis, the story follows a girls' high school soccer team on their way to nationals. Their plane crashes, and they're out in the wilderness for a very extended period of time. We get to see some imagery as events play out, and I'm going to get to that in just a little bit. But a lot of what sh is shown is shrouded in mystery. The present plays out following a handful of the now women as they navigate their adult years. Some are more successful than others, but there's still this air of mystery that's playing out in this present timeline as well. The cast is really well put together. On the present side, we have Melanie Linsky, Christina Ricci, Tawny Cypress, and Juliette Lewis. For the 1996 younger cast, we have Ella Purnell, Jasmine Savoy Brown, who was just in Scream 5, Sophie Thatcher, who I just saw in an episode of The Book of Boba Fett, which that was kind of cool, Sophie Nelise, Samantha Hanratty, and Kevin Alvis. But there are also so many other talented actors and actresses within this, and I've really got to hand it to a lot of the younger cast because they craft their performances to capture so many of the nuances of their adult counterparts. Sophie Thatcher is the younger version of Juliette Lewis's character and she nails that scratchy voice and particular vocal cadence that Lewis has. Now, it's one thing to kind of resemble another character, but to match their vocal stylings is something else, and this cast does it impressively. The story may feel a little familiar in some of its setup, because it did to me, too. I mean, it felt like a mix of Alive, that soccer team stuck in the Andes movie, and then The Lord of the Flies. Now, the latter is only from some very brief imagery that we get towards the beginning of the show, so I'm not really sure how deeply it really dives into that theme over the course of the entire story. As we bounce back and forth between timelines in this 10-episode first season, there's a growing mystery that evolves. Now, in the present, the main characters are seeing some imagery that was present in their past, like a certain marking or this symbol. Because they're all very secretive about what had occurred on that faithful trip, to see this pop up again in their current life makes them all very suspicious and nervous. And it creates a slight sense of foreboding and at least some tension for the story, which I found enjoyable. In the past, we're pretty much watching the events play out chronologically, but not moment for moment where it would get boring. I mean, we see tensions rise, annoyances bubble up, especially as time goes along, and then they begin to feel more desperate. I got sucked into their drama as many of the players have these secrets that involve other players, or they experience things that could have a huge impact on the group as a whole. The reveal for events in this portion is slow, but it's deliberate. I think we get enough to keep wetting our appetite, but it can be frustrating also when it seems like there's not a lot of forward momentum. I mean, I think in these times we're getting more character development and insight to help us connect more with the group. While I love how much of the present events and mystery are being built out, some portions feel more dragged out than others. There's a story arc with Tawny Cypress's character, who is a politician in the present time. And when we see her family drama and some odd behaviors, I mean, I was sucked in at these moments. But I think some of those political portions become a little tedious, even though it would be a detriment to cut it all out. Parts are needed for motivations and establishing her character, but there are a few sequences that play out probably longer than they should for the payoff. And the same goes for a side relationship with Juliette Lewis's character. While portions are mildly important, I mean, at least for now, some areas just feel drawn out. We can get a lot of the same emotional impact and still shore it up a bit to tell a more concise storyline. Now, I mentioned some disturbing imagery earlier, and there are moments, especially in the past timeline, that really help to solidify the team's mindset as they become more desperate to survive in the wilderness. I'd even say that the show hedges on a slight supernatural bent at times, which I think adds to intrigue, but it also doesn't break it out of the realm of plausibility. And I like that it still stays grounded, even if it's a tiny bit outside the norm. There is some crazy violence that happens, and the show opens with a very disconcerting sequence, which I think then really helps to set the tone for everything moving forward. We get a glimpse of the past, and it's certainly something very dark, so that we know that everything that follows is going to be impacted, or will have been impacted, by this decision. 
I love how twisted a lot of this is. There are a couple characters who are pretty matter-of-fact when it comes to certain tasks. And these are things that would probably make many squeamish, I mean, including myself. But the detached and calculated nature of how they carry out their actions is a bit scary, but then it's also wonderful to watch. Now, if you like animals, there are some scenes that are pretty harsh to watch, so just be prepared if you begin to binge. Each episode is close to an hour in length, which makes for a wonderful binge session. I mean, I was drawn into the tone and the mystery of the show, and then I fell in love with watching the characters. And the soundtrack in this is so great to hear, as just much of it pulls from the late 80s to the mid-90s. And it actually made me go and start to add a bunch of songs that I had forgotten about to my Spotify playlist. Now, as much as I've enjoyed this, the season finale bothered me a little for some reason. I mean, I'm still having trouble putting my finger on exactly what that point is. But I like how we get some resolution for several of the story arcs, and I also like that some new questions have arisen. Then I also like certain sequences that I was sure led to a pivotal event that just ended up not being what I thought it was. There's just one small scene towards the very end that feels maybe a little too convenient, or maybe it's just more abrupt, so it felt forced or shoehorned in to then continue the story into the next season. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm still going to be there all in for season two. I love the aesthetic, the intrigue, all the dark mystery, and of course, the characters. And I'm really interested to see where this is all going. My hope, though, is that this resolves itself fully in this next season. It doesn't just drag out all of the plot points to where the show becomes stale and rote versus something being very exciting and mysterious. So overall, Yellow Jackets is an engrossing mystery supported by wonderful character stories. The actors all do great jobs to form characters that you either love or love to hate. I'm fascinated with what the characters will do next and where the story is going to lead us because what this first season has provided was a great amount of character development along with building out two separate but tied together storylines. And the music is phenomenal, I think especially if you're Gen X. And despite some finale story wonkiness and a few pacing issues, the overall dark and ominous tone of the show is captivating and disturbing. There's sex, nudity, and a ton of profanity and violence. I give season one of Yellow Jackets four out of five couches. Have you been watching this series? I'd love to know what you thought of this first season in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.